Hello everyone and welcome to the last lesson in physical education which is about officiating basketball. Our most essential learning competency is that at the end of the lesson you'll be able to officiate, practice, and competitive games. By the way, I would appreciate if you will subscribe to my channel where I post all the lessons in MAPE and if you like this video, please leave a like and comment after the lecture has ended. So let's get started. Officiating is an important part of any sports activity, whether it is competitive or recreational, because it helps in making the activity more fun and challenging. So good officiating results to good game, and good game provides better entertainment. Sports officiating is not just the judge role in the court. It benefits us by improving our fitness. So participation in physical activities such as officiating coupled with healthy lifestyle will surely lead us to attaining and sustaining a quality and healthy lifestyle. Sports is a very wide field composed of several dynamic people and events interacting with it with one another. So it is important it is a popular activity of most people for its characteristic of being fun, exciting, and challenging to its participants. But our idea of sports participation is mostly limited on players' role in the sports field. Perhaps it is one of being highlighted during competition. But there are more to sports than just being a player, and that is officiating. The best officiating brings out the best playing ability of each player while poor officiating can easily ruin the game. But good officials are not made instantly. They are the result of many years of study and practice gained through actual officiating. So a game of basketball is presided over by a referee and an umpire along with a timekeeper, a scorer, and a 30-second operator. The official should wear uniforms distinct from those of either team and they should report on the playing court at least 10 minutes before game time. So that is what we are going to discuss today, who are the officials of a basketball game. First we have the referee. So a referee is the official in charge during and after the game. He is the official who watches a game or match closely to ensure that the rules are adhered to or nasusunod and sometimes to arbitrate on matters siya nang namagitan. So he has the full responsibility to enforce the rules and maintain the order of the game and he has the final say on disciplinary matters. He also controls the game and takes up position on opposite sides of the court. So ganun karami yung rules ng isang referee. Siya yung nanonood sa isang laro, siya yung nag-e-ensure na lahat ng mga rules ay nasusunod, at siya yung nag arbitrate kung sakaling merong mga nagkakaroon ng problema, nagkakaroon ng, ng pag-aaway yung mga players, siya yung nag-e-enforce ng mga rules na yun and make sure na lahat ng mga nangyayari sa loob ng game is in proper order. And also, siya din yung nagpapay, nagbibigay ng disciplinary matters dun sa mga nangyayaring ano, problema sa loob ng court. So aside from that, a referee inspects and approves all equipment including court, baskets, ball, blackboards, inspect timers and scorer signals, designates the official timepiece and its operator, designates the official scorebook and the official scorer, responsible for notifying each campaign, Three minutes before each half to begin. So, sina ini-inform yung captain, or oh, three minutes, magsisimula na tayo. Yan. So, he also decides whether or not a goal shall count if officials disagree. So, siya yung nagdi-decide kung pasok ba yung score na yon or hindi. Kung sakaling hindi nagkakasundo yung mga ibang officials. So, he may forfeit the game when the, continues, when the conditions warrant. Kapag, nag, for example, nagkaroon na ng mga problema, like bumagyo na, ganyan, or kung ano man na nagkaroon ng problema inside the court, pwede niya i-forfeit or patigil yung laro. So, he decides upon matter on which the timers and scorers disagree and has the power to make decisions on any point specifically covered by the rules and determines of ground rules are necessary. So, those are the rules of, rules of a referee. Now, let's discuss the rules of a timekeeper. The timekeeper, also called the timer, is charged with certain duties according to the rules of basketball. The timer should be familiar with all of the rules and obligations in the game kasi siya siyempre yung nagkikip ng oras. Mastering these rules and regulations can help avoid confusion 
during the game for both the officials and the timekeepers. So he keeps a record of playing time and stoppage in the play. So kailan nag-start, kailan nag-stop. For example, nag-time out, kinakailangan alam niya kung anong specific na oras na nagkaroon ng time out. So titigil ang times, panahon na yun. So the times and the times, the time outs, the, and indicates when each half or overtime ends. So yun yung mga roles ng timekeeper. Aside from that, the timekeeper also keeps and shows the time of a basketball game to ensure that all quarters are played evenly and to indicate the end of the game or quarter. So if there is a timing mistake in the game, the official timekeeper must also inform the official of any specific knowledge relating to the mistake. Kung kapag ba, nagkaroon ng konting problema dun sa oras na, na hindi na i-reflect or na sabi ng tama. So, kinakailangan i-inform agad ng official timekeeper yon sa mga officials para maayos yung oras na yon. So, the timekeeper has the responsibility of notifying the officials the time has run out or, and helping them determine if a goal should count. Kung pasok ba yung, yung bola sa, ta- sa oras o hindi. Yan. So, he consults officials as to signals used to indicate a timeout and resumption of game keeps eyes on the officials throughout the game and checks on the duration of time substitution, etc. Kung nakakara ilang time out na ba yung isang team, sumasobra na ba siya, mayroon bang sa substitution na gaganap. So lahat ng yan ay sinasibaybayan ng isang timekeeper. So when to start clock? First is when the ball is legally tapped on all jump balls. Yeah. So second is when ball is touched in bounds. If resumption of play is by a throw-in after clock has been stopped. So that's the second. And then third is when the ball is legally touched after a missed free throw and the ball is to remain alive. So after na na-miss yung free throw, so tuloy yung oras kapag natamaan naman ng legal yung bola. And then kailan naman natin is stop yung clock. First is when time expires at the end of the period. Talagang tapos na yung oras sa period. And when an official signals a foul a fi- an or a signals a jump ball. So, and when a violation occurs and when an official orders a timeout. So, those are the times when a timekeeper should stop the clock. And then lastly, we have the scorer. So, the scorer, also called scorekeeper, keeps a record of points scored, all fouls called against his players, timeouts charged to each team, notes the starting lineups, and keeps a record of all substitutions. So, in short, siya yung parang secretary <laughs> sa isang laro. So, scorers should also refrain from any other distracting activities such as texting, chatting, or talking during play. It is also advised that the responsibilities for bookkeeping and timekeeping not be delegated to just somebody else for the protection and confidentiality of the scores. Scoring for individual players is least important. Obtains names and numbers of all players who may participate in a game at least 10 minutes before the start of the game is also one of the rules of a scorer. So at least 3 minutes before the scheduled starting time, have each team designate its first 5 players. He also reports, reports any failure to comply referees. Yan. So, siya din yung nag-apapaalala nag, uh, na, oh, mag-3 minutes before time, dapat na alam ko na kung sino yung first five players niyo Yan. So, records feel goods made. Ilan yung mga tira, ilan yung free throws na na-miss at saka tumasok. So, running summary of points scored, personal and technical fouls on each player, team personal fouls per half, and timeouts. So, those are the rules of a scorer. Now, let's discuss basketball. Basketball is the most popular sports in the Philippines. Sabi nga nila, di ba? Tatlong bagay na talagang paborito ng mga Pilipino is basketball, boxing, and beauty contest. Yan, tatlo na yan. Talaga ang favorite natin. At syempre, pagdating sa sports, number one talaga ang basketball na paborito ng mga Pinoy. So, basketball is, as we know, a team sport. So, it was introduced in the Philippines during the American colonial period with the first American teachers teaching the sports. So, ang mga Americans ang nag-introduce ng basketball sa Pilipinas and it was introduced to the Philippine public school system by the Americans as a women's sports in 1910 and was played in interscholastic league in 1911 to 1913. 
The first men national team, organized in 1910, won the first Far Eastern Championship Games in 1913. Ang galing, di ba? So, after three years, naging na silang, <laughs> yun na, first national team natin. Siya din yung nanal, nanalo sila ng champ, ng, ng, as champion noong 1913, di ba? Sa Far Eastern Championship Games. In all but one of the ten editions of the game, the national team won the gold medal. So, galing. Pinapakita lang ng mga Pinoy magagaling talaga sa basketball. So, let's discuss the different rules of basketball. First is that two teams of each of f- five players each try to score by shooting a ball through a hoop elevated 10 feet above the ground. So, yan. Kinakailangan bawat is dal meron dalawang team na magkalaban na meron ting is tiglimang players at ang game ang ang ang, ang, ang ano na, aim nila is ma-shoot nila yung bola sa hoop. Yeah. So the game is played on a rectangular floor called the court and there is a basket or hoop at each end. And then the court is divided into two main sections by the mid-court line. So ito yung itsura na isang basketball court. So we have the three-point line, the free throw line, the center circle, the mid-court line, and then the baseline. So sa loob naman, makikita natin yung backboard we have the basket naka-attach dun sa backboard and we have the sidelines and then we also have the free throw lane or also known as the paint so parehas na side meron niyang free throw lane na merong uh, nasa line at meron din naman na free throw lane <laughs> yun yung uh, yan, in red or aka the paint yan. so that is what a basketball court looks like and as for the basketball players, meron siyang five specific positions to court. So each of these basketball position has their own rules and responsibilities. Like for example, the point guard, the first, is also known as the floor general or the one. It is one of, of often one of the shortest players on the team and is responsible for advancing the basketball up the court and setting up team's offense. So si point guard siya yung responsible sa pag advance ng bola sa court at mag-set up ng opensa nung, nung kanilang team. So, usually, si point guard siya yung pinakamaliit sa kanilang team. Second is the shooting guard, also known as the off guard or number two. It is often one of the shorter players on the team and generally starts an offensive possession on the wing. So, si, si point guard at si shooting guard, almost parehas yan. Hindi sila ganong katangkaran pero sila talaga yung nag in charge sa offensive possession. Then we have the small forward, also known as three, and is often the most versatile of the five basketball positions on the court, both offensively and defensively. So the small forward, he can play offense and defense, while number four is called power forward, and he is usually the second tallest player on the team and is required to be both strong and skilled. Kasi siya, since uh, ini-expect siya na kaya niyang gumawa ng offense at saka defense, particularly defense. So, kinakailangan malaki yung katawan niya, malakas at malakas siya, yan. At magaling, yan. Kaya mga kalala, kilala natin magagaling na mga basketball player, usually they are power forward, di ba? Yan. And then lastly, we have the center, who is also known as the five. It is usually the tallest and strongest player on the team and spends most of the time close to the basket. So, center, siya yung pinakamatangkad sa kanila, pinakamalakas, kasi kadalasan siya yung kumukuha ng rebound. So, if the offensive team puts the ball into play behind the mid-court line, it has 10 seconds to get the ball over the mid-court line. So, if it doesn't, then the defense gets the ball. So, lilipat yung bola kapag hindi nila ibalik, na, 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 yung, na ibaba yung bola in din, within 10 seconds. So, once the offensive team gets the ball over the mid-court line, it can no longer have possession of the ball in the area behind the mid-court line. And if it does, the defense is awarded the ball. So, the ball is moved down the court toward the basket by passing or dribbling. Hindi mo pwedeng hawakan lang yun. Kinakailangan ipasa mo yun or i-dribble mo yun. So, the team with the ball is called the offense. And the team without the ball is called the defense. The defense try to steal the ball, contest shots, pigilan yung mga tira, deflect passes, agawin yung mga pasa, and garner rebounds. Kung sakaling hindi pumasok ang bola, mag-rebound. So, when a team makes a basket, 
they score two points and the ball goes to the other team. So if a basket or field goal is made outside of the three-point arc, then the basket is worth three points. A free throw is worth one point. So pwede kang magkaroon ng two, point, two points and then at the same time, nagkaroon ka pa ng free throw, kaya nagkakaroon ng, ng three points. <laughs> Yung isang galaro pag na-foul ka. Yeah, so three points are awarded to a team according to some formats involving the number of fouls committed in and or the type of foul committed. A foul, fouling a shooter always results in two or three free throws being awarded to the shooter depending on upon where where he was when he shot. So if he was beyond the three-point line, then he gets three three shots. Yan. So for example, tumasong yung tira mo habang nasa three-point line ka at na-foul ka, so meron kang free throw na isa. Yun. Kung hindi naman pumasok, then meron kang tatlong free throw. So, same thing din, ganun din kung, na, kung wala ka sa three-point line. Halimbawa, tumira ka, pumasok, tapos na-foul ka habang tumitira ka. So, meron kang isa pang free throw na, is, na isa. Pero kung halimbawa, hindi pumasok ang tira mo at wala ka sa three-point line, then dalawang free throw yung gagawad sa'yo. So, other types of foul do not result in free throws being awarded until a certain number have accumulated during half. This is called team fouls. So once that number is reached, then the player who was fouled is awarded a one and one opportunity. And if he, if he makes his free, first free throw, he gets to attempt a second. And if he misses the first shot, the ball is live on the rebound. So basketball assignment and tip off. So each team is assigned a basket or a goal to defend. This means that the other basket is their shooting basket. So at halftime, the team switch goals. The game begins with one player from either team at the center court. Referee will toss the ball up and between the two. And the player that gets his hands on the ball will tip it to a teammate. So this is what we call tip off. And then there are different fouls and violations in the basketball game. So in addition to stealing the ball from an opposing player, there are other ways for a team to get the ball. One such way is if the other team commits a foul or violation. So ano ba ibig sabihin ng foul? <laughs> Yan. So this, it, it, it could be a personal foul which includes any type of illegal physical contact like pinulak mo, pinu, eh, Tina, sinaktan mo, pinalo mo, silap mo, yan. So, holding, hinawakan mo, and then illegal pick, pick up or illegal screen. So, when an, an offensive player is moving, when an offensive player sticks out a limb and makes physical contact with the defender in attempt to block the path of the defender. So, yan mga yan ay what we call personal foul. So, ang personal foul ay meron ding katumbas na penalty. If a player is shooting while being fouled, then he gets three, two free throws if his shot doesn't go in. Ito yung explain ko sa inyo kanina. But, if only, but only one free throw if his shot goes in. So, para nagkaroon siya ng tatlong tira <laughs> kapag ganun. So, meron tayong tinatawag na three free throws. This is awarded if the player is fouled while shooting for a three-point goal and miss their shot. Hindi ba ako, tumitira siya sa three-point line siya, hindi pumasak tira niya. So, then meron siyang three free throws. Pero, if a player is fouled while shooting a three-point shot and makes it anyway, pumasok yung tira niya, he is awarded only a one, for, a, a one free throw. Thus, he could score four points in the play. <laughs> yeah. And then, we also have inbounds. So, sa inbounds, if fouled while not shooting, hindi pa siya tumitira, the ball is given to the team, the foul was committed upon. So, they get the ball in the rear side or baseline out of bounds and have 5 seconds to pass the ball into the court. Yan. And also, we have other types of fouls such as charging, blocking, and flagrant foul. So, sa charging, as an offensive foul that is committed when a player pushes, tinulak, <laughs> or runs over a defensive player. So, ito ay ginagawa naman ng mga nag o -opensa sa mga defensive player. So, the ball is given to the team that the foul was committed upon. So, pwede ka rin pala makafoul ko. Ikaw ay mahawak ng possession ko. <laughs> so, yung tawag doon is charging. So, sa blocking naman, this is an illegal personal contact resulting from a defender not establishing possession in time to prevent an opposing opponent's drive to the basket. And yung flagrant is 
violent contact with an opponent. This includes hitting, kicking, and punching. Toong away na yan. That is what we call flagrant foul. This type of foul results in free throws plus the offensive retaining possession of the ball after the free throw. So imagine that, nag-free throw na yung kalaban mo, sila pa may hawak ng bola. Yan ang parusa sa flagrant foul. And we also have intentional foul. For the word intentional, ibig sabihin sinasadya. When a player makes physical contact with other player with no reasonable, reasonable effort to steal the ball, it is a judgment call for the officials. Kung sasabihin niya na intentional yan, sinadya niya yan. And then last is we have we, have, we call technical foul. So technical foul is a player or a coach can commit this type of foul. So it does not involve player contact or the ball but is instead about the manners of the game. It's like foul language, obscenity, obscure, obscene gestures, and even arguing can be considered as a technical foul. And as can technical details regarding feeling in the scoreboard improperly or dunking during warm-ups. So, bawal pala yung magdadunk kapag nag-warm-ups. Pwede ka ma- pwede kang tawagan ng technical foul. O kaya si coach nag-away sa mga officials. So, pwede siyang gawaran ng technical foul. As for violations, we have yung pinakakilala sa lahat is yung traveling or taking more than a step and a half without dribbling the ball is called traveling. Moving your pivot foot while once you've step, sorry, stop dribbling is called traveling. Kung malaw ka, hindi mo hindi ka nag-dribble habang naglalakad ka. Yung supposed to be dapat naglalakad ka. Kaya ilang nakapag more than two steps ka na na hindi ka nagdi-dribble that is called traveling. So, second is in carrying or palming when a player dribbles the ball with his hand far to the side of or sometimes even under the ball. Yun. So, isa yung klase ng pagdi-dribble, maling klase ng pagdi-dribble. And then we also have double dribble. So, dribbling the ball with both hands on the <laughs> with the <laughs> kamay mo yung pinag pinag-dribble mo at the same time or picking up the dribble then dribbling again is a double dribble so that's it that's the end of my discussion for the day and i hope that you learned something from me leave a like and comment on this video if you like this content and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button i appreciate all the love from you guys so stay safe and see you again next time